The sea can be a hostile and unforgiving environment. Until this century, ships in distress were on their own, at the mercy of the wind and weather, relying on luck and the chance of a passing ship. The advent of radio changed that. It became possible to summon assistance, but there were limitations. Alerting relied on Morse telegraphy. Perhaps only the radio officer could send a distress message. In the case of fire or sudden capsize or structural failure, he might be unable to reach the radio room. There would be no alert. And even if he got off a message, the limitations of the system might mean that no one received it. Until recently, it was possible for a ship to be in difficulties and yet, through no one's fault, be unable to alert those who could assist. This has now been changed forever by the introduction of the Global Maritime Distress and Safety System. It has made global safety communication coverage a reality. The last decades have seen an explosion in communications technology, which presented the opportunity for an improved and reliable global distress communication system. This was seized upon by the maritime community. The Global Maritime Distress and Safety System, the GMDSS, was evolved within the framework of the International Maritime Organization. Many other international organizations assisted. It took more than 10 years of research, discussion and consultation, and it makes the benefits of modern telecommunications technology available to the mariner in distress. The GMDSS extends into every part of the ocean and encompasses every ship. It has been designed to provide a substantial increase in safety at sea. Its equipment standards mean better communications and assured alerting of the rescue services. Its simplicity will enable anyone on board a ship to send a distress message without special training. Set, six, cinq, there are two new technologies that lie at the heart of the GMDSS. The first is satellite communications and the other is digital selective calling. Satellite communications are provided by two separate systems. The COSPAS SARSAT system provides rescue alerting only. The satellites are designed to pick up distress signals and to determine the position of the beacon and the identity of the ship. These satellites are in a low polar orbit. As they pass over an emergency position indicating beacon, an EPIRB, they store the alert and then pass it to an Earth station as it comes into the satellite's view. So a short time may elapse before the signal is passed to an Earth station. The other satellite system is the Inmarsat system. This offers automatic or push-button distress alerting, as well as a wide range of communication services, from voice to high-speed data. The further away from the Earth, the slower the rotation a satellite needs to stay in orbit. At one point, the speed of rotation required matches exactly the speed of the Earth's rotation. This leads to geostationary satellites, which effectively stay in one position over the equator. The Inmarsat system uses an array of four satellites, which gives global reception of messages and distress alerts. In practice, Geostationary satellites are not visible from the surface in the higher latitudes of the polar regions. There are two types of ship earth station. The larger and more powerful is the Inmarsat A. The antenna incorporates a gyro stabilized steerable dish which locks on to the satellite. So if we left at 1500. These stations are often controlled by a microcomputer. They provide fax, telex, and data messaging as well as radio telephony. They're often fitted for commercial reasons where decisions need to be taken quickly. Inmarsat A units also provide distress alerting at the push of a button. The Inmarsat C antenna is more compact and so is easy to mount where it has an uninterrupted view. The aerial is omnidirectional and does not focus the transmitter beam like a dish antenna. Inmarsat C is a store and forward system. It's used for telex messaging and data transfer. Voice communication is not possible. 
A distress alert is very easy to send using Inmarsat C. Two buttons need to be pressed simultaneously. The alert signal will include the time and the ship's identity and other vital information, such as the ship's position and course. The second technology involved in the GMDSS is Digital Selective Calling, or DSC. It provides automated calling in VHF, MF and HF. It enables a message to be sent to one or more selected stations. This is achieved by codes preceding the message. In this demonstration, using VHF DSC, the call number of the adjacent radio station is input and a working frequency, channel 6, chosen for conversation. Transmission of the message is affected by pushing a button. At the receiving unit, an alarm rings to signal that a message has been received. The equipment then automatically switches itself to the new channel, ready for the radio conversation. Although calls can be set up with DSC, voice transmission is not possible with it. Distress alerting via VHF DSC is very simple. On this equipment, two buttons are pushed simultaneously. The message is addressed to all stations and is received here by the unit on the bench next to it. It rings an alarm, as it will on all units that receive it. The DSC emergency channel is VHF channel 70. The message gives its emergency status, the transmitting ship's call number, the ship's position and time of the message. If the message is not acknowledged, it will continue to be transmitted. If it is acknowledged, this will be transmitted back to the sending station on the same frequency. If more time is available, the nature of the distress can easily be inserted in the distress message by selecting the type of emergency from the list provided. Sending a distress message using MF DSC is equally easy. The button needs to be held down for five seconds. The message takes longer to send because to ensure accurate transmission, it is sent five times. Similar information on the time of the message and the position of the ship is given. It is speed and reliability of communications that count in responding to an emergency at sea. Digital signals are very resistant to degradation and corruption during transmission, and so are more reliable than analog signals. During the years of development of the GMDSS, Every aspect of maritime communications relating to distress and safety was examined. These considerations led to the overall concept of the GMDSS. This incorporates the Inmarsat system, the Kospas Sarsat system and their respective earth stations, coast radio stations, maritime safety information services and rescue coordinating centers. In the GMDSS, all ships must be able to perform nine communication functions. First, ship-to-shore alerting. This can be by terrestrial systems, or via Inmarsat satellites, or using the EPIRB via the Kospas Sarsat system. In the GMDSS, the initial alert, however it is sent, will go to a rescue coordination center, an RCC. Secondly, shore-to-ship alerting whereby the RCC summons assistance from ships in the vicinity of the distress. Thirdly, ship-to-ship -ship alerting. This continues to have a place in the GMDSS, as it may, in some circumstances, lead to quicker rescue than ship-to-shore alerting. Fourthly, search and rescue coordination. During an emergency, the RCC will select one ship to act as a local command centre, this ship will coordinate operations under the control of the RCC. Fifthly, on-scene communications during rescue operations. These will be between all the ships at the scene and the mariners in distress, if possible. Sixthly, locating the distressed ship or survival craft on scene. This will be achieved primarily with radar. The final three functions are not directly involved in responding to emergencies. 
the communication of navigational and meteorological warnings and forecasts. This can be via Inmarsat or terrestrial systems. Next, general communications between ship and shore. This includes all communications that are not distress or emergency, but may be relevant to ship safety. And finally, bridge-to-bridge -bridge communications for navigational purposes. Each of these functions forms a vital part of the overall concept of the GMDSS. Together, they provide a thorough and comprehensive safety communications capability. Each is vital in its own way, and every ship, wherever it is in the world, must have the equipment to accomplish them. The precise type of equipment needed on board is determined by the ship's area of operation. The GMDSS defines four sea areas. These are delineated by radio communication capability rather than by geography and are determined by the local administration's radio services. Sea area A1 is an area within range of at least one VHF coast radio station where continuous DSC alerting is available. This defined area will depend on the height of the station antennas as VHF communication is effectively line of sight. Sea area A2 is the area excluding the A1 area within range of at least one MF coast station where DSC alerting is continuously available. Sea area A3 is the area covered by Inmarsat satellites, excluding the A1 and A2 areas covered by coast stations. This will include virtually all the navigable waters of the world. Sea area A4 is the area outside areas A1, A2 and A3. It will only be found in high latitudes where the geostationary satellites will be at a very low elevation or below the horizon. The building blocks of an operational GMDSS station are its items of equipment. Some of these may be unfamiliar to some mariners. This is an HF-MF transceiver with digital selective calling. It can be used for normal and distress calls. A distress message can be sent with just one push of the buttons. There are two systems to receive maritime safety information. One is a terrestrial system, the other is a satellite system. The terrestrial system is Navtex. The receiver processor has an effective range of about 400 miles from the transmitting station. The information given is generally in the English language. The satellite system is the International Safety Net Service, which uses the Inmarsat satellites and so covers sea areas A1, A2 and A3. It also prints out information in English. This system benefits from EGC, Enhanced Group Calling Capability. This allows the system to address warnings and forecasts to predetermined groups of ships or all vessels in a selected geographical area. Satellite EPIRBs are installed for automatic distress alerting. There are two types. The first type signal is picked up by the COSPAS SARSAT satellite system. The second type sends out a signal which is picked up by the INMARSAT system. Both types are designed to float free from the ship in case of sinking and self-activate. So, even if no one sends a distress signal, alerting still takes place. Both types can be activated on board for distress alerting. The SART the search and rescue radar transponder, seen here being checked, is used to enable the rescue units to locate the survivors. It must be carried into the survival craft and switched on. It remains passive until interrogated by a ship's radar. It must be secured at least one meter above sea level to give it adequate range. The signal it then transmits is clearly visible on a radar screen. The equipment a ship needs for the GMDSS is determined by which option for the sea area in which she trades is chosen by the owner. However, most ships will probably be equipped to operate in sea areas A1, A2 and A3. To the mariner on the bridge, 
A ship fully equipped for GMDSS provides a wide range of telecommunications facilities. This is the bridge of an ocean-going bulk carrier. She's designed to operate with a small crew. Starting from the right, a VHF transceiver with DSC. Then, the DSC-MF alerting facility for the two HF-MF radio telephone transceivers that are next to it. Then come two Inmarsat-C systems. Each has a VDU, a keyboard and a message terminal, as well as its own printer and disk drive. The disk drive enables all frequently used data to be stored and retrieved. The forward part of the bridge has a further two VHF transceivers for use during navigation, one of which can be switched to the DSC controller. On the aft bulkhead is the 2182 watchkeeping receiver. This is required until the 1st of February 1999 to pick up alerts from vessels not fitted for the GMDSS. There is also a Navtex receiver near the chart table to receive marine safety information. The vessel is fitted with two satellite EPIRBs, as well as three handheld VHF radio telephones. The ship also has two SATs. The owners have opted for duplication of equipment, as the ship does not carry a radio or electronics officer. The provision of the disk drive makes the addressing of messages, including telex messages, via the Inmarsat C systems, very simple as all the frequently used numbers can be stored and retrieved with a few keystrokes. The terminal can be used as a personal computer, all necessary software being stored on the disk. This makes much of the routine paperwork, such as updating crew lists, very easy. If hard copy is required, it's a simple matter to print out a list. Some administrations may not allow essential safety equipment to be used in this way because of the risk of computer viruses interfering with the safety software. This unit requires two buttons to be pressed simultaneously for distress alerting. If there is time, a more detailed distress message can be sent. Details can be given of course, speed, the emergency and the type of help required. This terminal has a further use in the GMDSS. Outside the operational area of the Navtex system, it provides maritime safety information via the safety net service. Looking at the diagram that we saw earlier, we can see that on this particular ship, ship to shore and shore to ship alerting is available via MF and VHF, both with DSC and Inmarsat C. Ship-to-ship -ship alerting is possible with DSC via HF, MF and VHF. The HF, MF and VHF systems provide search and rescue communications should they be needed. The portable walkie-talkies can be used for on-scene communications during rescue operations or during abandonment. The ship's radar will be used to locate survival craft by picking up the signal from a SART. The Navtex receiver and the Inmarsat C systems both provide access to maritime safety information services. General communications are available through Inmarsat C, VHF and MF and HF. Bridge to bridge communications will be via the VHF systems. This ship is thus fully fitted for navigation in sea areas A1, A2 and A3. This ship is a modern chemical tanker, also designed to be operated by a small crew. She's very well equipped with telecommunications equipment. Starting from the left, a ship's intercom. Above this is a cellular telephone, which can only be used in Scandinavia, the vessel's usual area of trade. Next to this is the ship's main HF-MF transceiver. This has a DSC alerting capability. Next is a VHF transceiver, also with a DSC alerting function. Below this is the Inmarsat A terminal. Voice communication using Inmarsat A is by the telephone. This unit also has a single button alerting capability. 
This system can also send and receive telex using the printer in front of it. Behind the printer is an additional HF-MF receiver. Above that, a further VHF transceiver. And in the very corner, a Navtex receiver. Further round is a telex machine, which can be programmed to send either via Inmarsat or via HF. Below this is a DSC decoder for MF and HF. It has a single button distress message facility. Next to that is the Inmarsat C terminal. This is routinely used for the ship's business messages. It has a double button alerting capability. Further round to the right is a microcomputer with a telex facility. Below it are the telex transmission and receiving units. Further round still is a fax machine and then two telex printers. Other equipment on the bridge includes a watch receiver for 2182 kilohertz. A radio direction finder is provided for navigation and for locating vessels in distress using the old system. There are sufficient walkie-talkies for the ship's operational needs. These would be used for general short-range communications as well as during lifeboat drills and during abandonment. The forward area of the bridge has a further two VHF systems, one of which is fitted with DSC alerting. These are used for communication in navigation and berthing operations. The ship is also equipped with satellite EPIRBs and SARTs. The equipment on this ship fulfills the GMDSS functions in the following ways. Ship to shore and shore to ship alerting is available using Inmarsat A and C, as well as DSC in VHF, HF and MF. Ship to ship alerting is available through VHF, HF and MF DSC. The four separate VHF installations, as well as the HF and Inmarsat systems, offer scope for communication with the Rescue Coordination Centre. The portable walkie-talkies give the ship the capability of on-scene communications during rescue operations. The ship's radar will be used to locate SARTs. Safety and weather information is available via the Navtex receiver and Inmarsat C via the International Safety Net Service. General communication is available through Inmarsat A and C as well as VHF, HF and MF. The VHF systems provide bridge-to-bridge -bridge communications. As on the other ship, many of the equipment units offer push-button distress facilities. It would be easy for any mariner to send a distress message from this bridge. And even if this were not possible, there is always the satellite EPIRB, which can either float free or be switched on in its stowed position. The GMDSS is truly a more reliable and more comprehensive safety communication system for mariners. It is being introduced in phases. Implementation began in February 1992. In August 1993, satellite EPIRBs and Navtex receivers became mandatory for cargo ships over 300 gross tons and all passenger ships. All ships built from February 1995 must comply with all GMDSS requirements. By February 1999, all ships will carry all the necessary GMDSS equipment. The GMDSS is the start of a new era for mariners. Wherever they are on the world's oceans, they will be part of a global safety system. For further information, Read the booklet included with this video and watch the program again. In the GMDSS, the simplicity of operation and the reliability of the technology will provide mariners in distress with a definite ability to contact the rescue services and other ships for help. Every ship in their vicinity and every available form of assistance will be notified quickly and dependably of their position and situation. The GMDSS offers mariners new peace of mind. It provides them with a worldwide safety system which is operational wherever their livelihood takes them on the world's oceans. <laughs>